And if you're a fan of architecture, well, there's a section of Palm Springs that you're going to want to see. Steve Sumrall takes us on a tour of the Twin Palms neighborhood in tonight's edition of Our Desert Past. So Twin Palms takes its name from the fact that when the neighborhood was first built, William Kreisel uh, bequeathed to every home site two palm trees. William Kreisel was not only an architect, in addition to his home design talents, he was quite skilled at landscaping. He made sure that every one of the homes in this neighborhood was purchased fully landscaped. And that was as rare in the 1950s as it is today. But by doing so, uh, uh, Mr. Kreisel could keep control over the entire environment. He believed that what he was doing was not just building homes, but creating entire environments for his home buyers to live in. All of the homes in Twin Palms, they started at about $31,000, which was a little a little bit high for the for the times but all of those homes came standard with a swimming pool with rudimentary air conditioning and they came with perimeter fencing so you were getting a lot more than you were getting from from other homes comparably priced Chrysler was employed by the Alexander Construction Company which was founded by George Alexander and his son, Robert. They built over 22,000 houses in the Coachella Valley between 1955 and 1965. Robert Alexander, who was a college friend of Chrysler's, lived in this house with his family. Some past members of the Twin Palms community include Eddie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds, Palm Springs first celebrity mayor, Charlie Farrell, sci-fi icon, Ray Bradbury, and MASH producer, Larry Gelbart. Chrysler himself would be honored by this community. February 16th, 2016 was proclaimed William Chrysler Day, and one street, William Chrysler Way, was named in his honor. This was a year before he passed away at the age of 92. And although it's famously referred to as the William Chrysler neighborhood, Twin Palms does feature some impressive designs by other notable architects, such as Hal Levitt's trapezoid house. The facade, the front of the house, has a series of trapezoidal features, which is uh, uh, st coffered stonework in a trapezoidal shapes, and that alternates with inverted trapezoid windows. It, it has a very distinctive look, and that distinction carries to the inside of the home. There is a slightly sunken living room, and every room except the bedrooms have walls of uh, floor to ceiling wall-to-wall -wall glass so anywhere from the inside of the house you can look straight through and see the, the rest of the house. There is this, another really distinctive standalone residence in the neighborhood is the True Blood residence. The idea for this property was conceived by its original owner Doug True Blood. True Blood was a world-renowned theme park designer so you know it's got to be fun. The property has three separate structures on it. And each one has its own private green space. So you can walk out of what, whichever unit it is you're using now and be in your own realm separate from the rest of the property. Also, a swimming pool, 60 feet long and 10 feet wide, takes up two thirds of the property. The three structures are built around it and to get from one, proper, one of the structures to the other, a wooden bridge was built so that you could you could cross over to the other side. Twin Palms also features the last home built from a Donald Wexler design, which ironically is also the first home built from a Donald Wexler design. There were three vacant lots, three vacant residential lots in the Twin Palms neighborhood. One of them was owned by a couple who wanted to turn that lot into a, a Don Wexler original house. Unfortunately, he was retired at the time, so Mr. Wexler recommended one of his protégés to do the work. But when their relationship with that developer didn't work out, they went to the man himself. So that he said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will give you the blueprints for the home that I built for myself and my family when I first moved to the desert. And all you'll have to pay for is whatever upgrades are necessary in order to bring it up to contemporary building code. And there was one structure designed by Carrie Bigman that was truly out of this world. 
One of Carrie Bigman's calling cards was uh, circular features, and you can see on just about every one of the five or six homes he designed in Twin Palms, and none of them were more so than on the house that is known as the Flying Saucer House. This house no longer exists in this form. It was uh, reimagined several years after it was built, but it was absolutely spectacular at the time and, and reminded people of a flying saucer saucer that had uh, that had just landed on the site. Lastly, Twin Palms is honorably served by Fire Station Number 4, designed by Hugh Capture in 1973. Built in a southwestern Mesa design style, it was abandoned for years, then renovated and put back into service in 2019. For our Desert Past, Steve Sumrall, NBC Palm Springs, News First.